All right, so today we have a longtime friend and uh, well, probably one of my original clients way back in the day, um, Miss Marie, uh, not Acosta anymore, uh, Jensen, oh, right? Anymore. Jensen, Jensen, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you start having to change your last name, you know you're getting old. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm oh, <yeah>. joking. <laughs> so... Wanted to bring you on because you've had quite the, uh, I, I, I would say like quite, quite a cool journey in the fitness industry from where you started to where you're at now. Uh, I'll, uh, you know, part of what uh, is kind of cool is you actually follow we all the way through, got your pro card yeah. in, uh, in, in bikini. Um, and you also finished school with what degree? Um, health exercise science field uh, with a bachelor's degree. There you go. Yeah. Bunch of sciencey stuff, guys. It's it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you have your own business. Yes. It's Kratos. Kratos Athletics. Kratos. At, there you go. Yeah. There's the plug-in. So <laughs> wanted to bring you on so we could chat a little bit about all of that stuff, about what you're doing with your business. And, you know, primarily are you, your personal training, you're advising on nutrition, you're doing pretty much everything right now, right? Yeah, correct. Um, well, right now my main focus is school. I'm back in school, going Again. for my math degree. Oh, okay. Degree. I thought you were done. <laughs> no, no. I think I'm gonna uh, forever be a student. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So I'm back in school, and so that's my main focus right now. Um, I do have a Kratos Athletics uh, business going, and I have some online clients that I'm training. Um, so that's the main thing right now. School with my business kind of on the back end right now because I am just super focused with the education part. But um, once I'm able to have more time, then I'll be able to take on more clients. But as of now, I'm booked with time. Fair enough. Fair enough. That makes sense. School takes a ton of time. So a master's in what? Uh is um, it, in the health exercise science field. Okay. You can end up going for your doctorate too? You know what? I'm, I am thinking, <laughs> yeah, that is an option for me. So we'll see how this uh, master's program goes and we'll take it from there. I don't like creating plans because we all know how those can not go according to how we plan. That's very true. Yeah. Um, yeah I like, I like having a, a an idea of what I'm going to do, but I don't really ever have a precise plan. <laughs> yeah. Now I just have a bunch of options like, okay, let's have this, let's have that, let's have that. And if none of those work, then we'll have other options available. There you go. That's perfect. So, you know, break down kind of your, your journey to your pro card. I think that's something that that's super impressive. And I don't think people realize how difficult it is to get a pro card, especially in your in your height division, I would argue. Um, probably one of the more co competitive uh, divisions out of bikini, right? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of girls in the short class, which is, you know, when amateur, it's considered class A. Um, but now I... Like, no. <laughs> Yeah, the the little uh, the little ones, but I think every class is huge now. Like bikini division oh. has just grown so much since like when I first started competing in 2021 with you. 20. Can you believe it's been that long? Oh, 20. You said 2021. Oh wait, 20, <laughs> 2012. Sorry, I got the oh, numbers backwards. There you go. Head. Damn, 2012. <laughs> that was that's crazy. That's such a long time ago. Um, you and then uh, you you brought your uh, friend Ari in too to do oh, yeah. a couple of shows. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I haven't seen her forever. Um, yeah, that's wild. So, what 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 uh, made you want to actually like go all the way through with it? Because you know you could have just you could have just stopped. Yeah, I mean, I could have stopped with my high school education too, but there's <laughs> that competitive person in me that just wants to keep going with whatever I set my mind to. And that was one of the things I set my mind to. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And I said I was going to do it and I did it. 
And same thing with the school, right? I'm like, you know, I'm going to set my mind to it. I'm going to get my degree. And I did it. It took me a long time to get my bachelor's degree. It's okay. But you I got did. it. You got it. <laughs> the, the main thing is, is that you do it, right? Um, true. So I don't know. I just, uh, just decided to do it. And I fell in love with the process, not with the mm. trophy and not with the where, you know, a lot of people like to compete, um, for the part, you know, good job. Congratulations. Um, but I actually fell in love with bodybuilding of mm -hmm. like going into the gym and building specific body parts and seeing the results. And that to me was the driving force behind competing. Interesting. Yeah. The, um, that, that actually reminds me of a, um, of a quote from uh, Tim Grover, who was uh, Michael Jordan's uh, strength coach. He's like, you don't have to, you know, you just, you just have to, you just have to be able to, to love the actual process of it. You know, you know, it's like, it's just, that's just part of it. And that, that really, I, I would argue is where true competitiveness is in, in athletes. And, and that's like, I feel like that, especially back then, I don't know how it is so much now since I've been so disconnected from that part of the industry for like seven, eight years at the very, maybe the seven oh. years at least. Yeah. Um, but, no ask anymore. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I just, it was, it just wasn't lined up with the direction of the, the, what I wanted to work on, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was fun, but you know, I mean, when you start working with, people who are in the, the men, the men's physique and even the bodybuilding, it's just other things I didn't want to deal with. Um, <laughs> athletes, right. Especially when it's bodybuilding and everything is like, Hey, can I have this? Hey, are you sure I need to eat that? Hey, are you sure I'm ready? Hey, you know, all <laughs> I understand on the athlete side. Oh yeah. Uh, wanting to make sure everything's perfected. And yeah, I enjoyed working with certain people. It's just it, <laughs> that, that I think that's always been like one, one thing I, I've always enjoyed as a coach is like having uh, people who are truly competitive and in nature and, and are truly an athlete at heart. Um, and it's just that industry, like most industries, even, um, you know, like CrossFit and stuff like that, they, you know, everything's about making money at the end of the day. And you get a bunch of people thinking they want to do something and they don't really want to do it. They just want to do what their friends are doing and you know how that yeah. goes like you said earlier they want to do it for the uh the, the <laughs> applaud and, and the ten dollar trophy or whatever but it's still <laughs> you know it's still in a, in a an accomplishment and it's just like it, it's probably one of the harder sports arguably considering how how strict you actually have to be all the time like I, I at least that's from my view from working with a, a wide arrangement of just athletes of all different types of sports yeah, it's, um, it takes a lot of discipline. You know, you're not always going to have that motivation, but when you lack motivation, that's when the discipline kicks in. And if you don't know how to be disciplined, you're not going to be successful in bodybuilding. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, especially when you have to actually eat the right amount of food all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's not an issue for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least for the um, phase where you're not cutting calories, the oh, cutting yeah. calories part that does get tough. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's where that's where everything happens, right? You know, you start having to pull more, pull back more, and pull back more, and <laughs> it's just like I'm not eating anything anymore. You know, you're starving <laughs> practically. It's just but, salt. What is this? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so what how how many years of uh just to give people an idea of how long it truly takes to to accomplish something how how long did that take from start to beginning from when you first started competing till when you got your pro card my very first show was uh governor's cup 2012 okay and, yeah um i did a show at least one show for sure i can't remember now it's been so long um every year since then mm. including Till, till this year. Oh, <laughs> I've done a show every year. Yeah. So it 2012 was my first year. And then I turned pro in 2017. Okay. Wow. That's a, so it was I, basically five solid years of, of, man, that's a, 
That's a long time to, and well, that's the funny thing. It's really not long, but it is long, right? Yeah. You know, the, um, I think there's, you know, how, I know you're still involved in the industry. Like how, how many people are able to walk into it now? Cause I remember back then some girls were able to just get their pro guard within the first year. Is that rare now? That's rare now. Yeah, yeah. it happens, but it is rare. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not really sure. I've been um, kind of with school. I kind of mm. haven't really been involved too much in uh, the bodybuilding industry. I mean, I did compete this year, but like in terms of um, staying updated with uh, shows. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been so involved with school. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Fair enough. So right now the school being the focus, what, mm-hmm. what, what are you looking to gain out of, uh, you know, it, pretty much pursuing more and more schooling and at more of an advanced degree? Is that what it would be? Yeah. You know, I just want to be the <laughs> really competitive, right? I just want to yeah. be the best at whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So personal training, like I have my online clients, um, then I want to be the best and I want to make sure that they are not going to get injured or hurt. You know, um, if it's making meal plans, I want to make sure that clients are eating nutrient dense foods and, and I want to use science behind that. And, you know, school has taught me how to use science based evidence and implement that into my plans and programs when I train my clients and me too. Like now that I just train myself when I compete. So being able to use what I'm learning and um, put that into my programs and it's all a learning um, process, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've been on keto for two years and I've done a couple of shows on keto and the first one was a learning curve. And then this last one, uh, still a learning curve, but better than the first one. And then I'm going to see how this next one goes, hopefully like third, you know, three times a charm. (laughs) So we'll see. Um, nice. But yeah, just using what I'm learning and implementing that into my training. So, what made you want to do this uh, with specifically with a ketogenic diet? Um, just learning about it and all the benefits from it. Mm-hmm. And I always heard, you know, from you actually. I think I was the first person I heard about keto. You know, when you were like a keto advocate. What happened to that? <laughs> um, no, it's not that I don't advocate for it. I, I just think the industry, because, you know, the fitness industry really did it a disservice almost. Um, that's like a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that that's like, it really, the the true benefits, I think, get lost in translation. Um, because I, I, you know, the things that attracted me to it a long time ago was when I was racing and uh, doing Spartan races. Okay. And, okay. Mount, and mountaineering a lot back in 2016, 2017. Um, and if it, it, for me, it was like self-experimentation. I just wanted to know. And, yeah. um, you know, I followed a lot of, uh, oh, goodness. Let me think. Whose research was it? Bullocks? No. Uh, the guy that wrote um, the, the art and science of low-carb diet or something um, volick yeah jeff volick yeah is that what you said i thought i heard yeah. you say a different yeah. name yeah no it was it was volick and then uh, a bunch of stuff that uh diagostino started talking a lot about um and then uh patrick arnold the biochemist guy who's created tons of supplements started talking about like exogenous uh ketone stuff and so all together it was it was really interesting to me and so i had to experiment so i i was all i was keto for a solid two years and then uh, got a little more involved with um, going between more of CrossFit, uh, powerlifting, a little bit. Of, it's just, a, I'm just doing too many different things all the time. And uh, mm-hmm. so it, 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 to me personally, it's just, I prefer the, I, I like the way I feel kind of going in and out of it because I still technically will check once in a great while and I can have ketones you know at 0.3 you know uh with the blood ketones in the morning um even just off of an 18 hour fast which i'm surprised i guess i'm fairly flexible um mm. but then you can do an hour fast without planning yeah yeah i can oh. uh, yeah i could actually i've done in the past where i can uh just do like a 48 mm. 48 hour fast without even 
doing anything different. Yeah. Um, fairly flexible, which I found, I found is kind of rare, uh, for at least people I've, I've interacted with. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I would argue it's because I'm so strict with everything else, like my sleep habits, my, you know, timing of yeah. everything. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm obsessed with being very, you know, stringent on those things. So maybe it has something to do with that. <laughs> Health is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And the interesting thing is like, I do blood work every six months and it seems like it's, uh, it's never really changed even while I was in keto or while I'm not, um, okay. with the exception of when we, we did some really uh, funny stuff with, uh, testing my cholesterol numerous times in the same week. And then that was a little different fasted with a bunch of fat or without any fat in my diet. And it was, it, that was one thing that did change it, but I never really did any more. I just haven't honestly had more time on my hands to do a lot more of the fun <laughs> self experimentation, but, yeah. um, yeah, enough about me. So <laughs> go back to, <laughs> I get to talk and then sometimes I'm like, oh shit, no, I got to talk about you. <laughs> so the, you found yourself wanting to dabble in it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we, so we started from bikini 2012 yeah. to pro 2017 mm -hmm. and then now I'm doing pro shows. I was planning on doing more this year, but man, school, I was going to do the November one coming mm -hmm. up. Um, but again, my main focus is school. That's a priority number one. Mm -hmm. And so I had to hold off on competing, but, um, I've been doing keto for going on three years, I think. And oh, wow. I've shows. Yeah. The last two shows were keto. And then this in January, I think I'm going to start really prepping again mm -hmm. to do a show, hopefully like April. So we'll see. And that'll be keto as well. Nice. So mm -hmm. what, what about it do you enjoy? Cause you kind of have to enjoy it to want to keep doing it. If my art, <laughs> I would argue. <laughs> uh, I don't, I think it would have to be the experimentation part of baking. I love yeah. baking. You do I love crazy cooking. Stuff. You see all my stuff, right? <laughs> yes. I really enjoy like coming up with keto recipes and sharing it with people mm -hmm. on the Kratos uh, <laughs> Instagram page. Plenty, so plenty there, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a call. I don't know. Did it kick off? Okay. Uh, no, we're good. We're good. Okay. So yeah, I think just. Uh, and okay, honestly, I feel like I get more out of my food eating keto mm -hmm. nutrients wise. Um, the profiles of what I eat, it's just really dense in nutrients compared to like white rice, yeah, right? There's nothing in there practically. Avocado <laughs> <laughs> or um, chia seeds or flax seeds mm -hmm. and all these other things that like have so many minerals and vitamins and. I don't know. I just feel better on it. I do. I feel great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I recall, um, the mental acuity part was probably my, my favorite part. Um, but the, so, so let me, let me ask you this then. So do you measure ketones? So I know? did when I was, um, the first show I did, I was like <laughs> a little neurotic with it. Um, Every morning, noon, and night, I tested. I did my blood ketones. I got a uh, the breath analyzer that well, the tests acetone for one. Yeah, really cool um, tool. Which one so was I it? Used that. Did you uh, use the ketonics uh, one? Yeah. Ketones. I still have it, so I'll probably start that when I start prepping again, mm. uh, just to really measure and see where my ketone levels are, uh, and then I would check my blood pressure and. Mm. Uh, the thing with me, I have really low blood pressure, so salt. Was, yeah, a lot of salt, right? Yeah, uh, but then I just talked to one of the professors who specializes in cardiovascular physiology, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, too much salt can change the uh, makeup of your vasculature. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ooh, I, I kind of got nervous, so mm -hmm. I um, cut back a little bit on my salt. But if if I don't have a certain amount, I get really lightheaded, and every time I stand up, I get dizzy, so I have to... Be hmm. cautious. You know, if, if it was to that's that's interesting. Like I would imagine, where 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 what where is that data coming from? Where he says it can change your vast, you know, like would that be in reference to the normal population who eats like crap? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't. It was a brief um, conversation. He's oh. super busy. I'm super busy. It was yeah. like I was in between going to labs. I'm like, hey, and then that was it. So oh, okay, I okay. I can get more information on it, which I probably will. But man, he's just so busy. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's <laughs> yeah. That part's insane. I, I can only imagine. But yeah, no, I always I, it's, I always find it interesting because I remember um, when. Uh, my friends who were in the medical field were asking me about my diet. They were like, Oh, you're going to die. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not like my triglycerides and cholesterol are, are, are significantly better than yours. So I was like, let's just compare, right? Like, you know, my triglycerides are like 70, you know, <laughs> you know, and then I have like 7% body fat back then I was maintaining fairly easy. And so it was, I was like, you know, everything looks fine. You know, everything, everything I was actually, I would argue on the better side of, of the, um, you know, the normal, I, I would argue, but, um, still even, even now, even without being keto, it still seems, seems the same, but you know, so what, uh, you know, it's funny, you, you, you actually said you enjoy the baking part and creating that's the part mm -hmm. I hated. And so literally <laughs> all I did was eat was, was like, meat and fat and coconut yeah, oil it was so boring you know it was kind of gross after a while it, meat uh, for me is like rare we'll eat meat um every now and then yeah, and i will yeah. get like the grass-fed beef or like the free-range mm -hmm. whatever chicken and uh but that's rare what we usually eat is eggs i say we because um courtney he's on keto too so it makes it easier, right? When yeah. your partner is also into the same meals and foods that you eat. But um, eggs and egg whites, mm -hmm. we eat uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, uh, whey protein powders, grass-fed beef, gelatin. So we mix it up with our proteins. Um, mm -hmm. Not boring. I yeah. would definitely say not boring. Well, for you, <laughs> you see no. what I mean? <laughs> Years. I would eat the stuff that you make if I could just buy it like that all the time, you know, but that gets really expensive. Yeah, because um, the ingredients we use is like organic oh and gosh, yeah. sure. Yeah. What, what we spend our money on is food. food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I'm the same way. Uh, you know, protein wise, do you notice you have to keep it really low to stay in keto? In um, I haven't checked it uh, in a while, but when I do. Uh, when I was checking it, and um, this is when I was in prep season, mm -hmm. I was cutting, um, I did cut down. I was at, uh, my macros were 5% net carbs. It was like 5 to 10%. It would vary. Um, net carbs and then 70% fat and the rest was protein. And I did notice, yeah, um, on days where I had a little bit higher protein, it would decrease the the blood ketones not so much the breath though so that was interesting to see that you know i actually think i remember reading about that like the uh, level of acetone ketones in your in your uh, breath were more for somebody uh, they stayed higher or was it lower they were mostly consistent there was a certain consistency amongst people who were long-term you know consistent with keto that's the fascinating mm -hmm. part about that diet. It's like the only measurable diet if you know if you're doing it right because you can actually yeah. test it, right? And so yeah. every other diet is kind of like, well, I think, you know, it, depends. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on what, what parameters you're, you're using to dictate whether it's working or not. But, you know, the uh, did you notice any difference in terms of uh, musculature or strength or or like, cause you're folk, you do mostly bodybuilding, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like any, any difference in aer aerobic capacity or anything like that? No, I never checked my, uh, VO two max, but, um, now that labs back in, I'm going to mm -hmm. check it next semester. So I'll, I'll update you with the VO two max on my keto. Um, but in terms of just like nothing measurable and just my own opinion, yeah, yeah. Out my, I dropped fat way faster than mm -hmm. on a normal, like carbohydrate, whatever you want to call it, diet. So oh. compared to other my normal my past preps that I would do with eating regular carbs, yeah, my fat loss, the rate of fat loss was way higher during keto. Do you think some of it has to do with being able to maintain lower calories? 
or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, were you able to maintain lower calories longer to to cause that, or are you saying that the same amount of calories with a carbohydrate rich diet? I actually ate honestly this last keto prep. I ate the most I've ever eaten during like the last two weeks. Nice. I was at like. Three weeks out, I think I was eating like fourteen hundred calories, and for me, I'm four eleven. Yeah, so. that's a that's a good amount. Yeah, yeah. and so, so your your like amount of exercise didn't wasn't like significantly more than before. You know, I did step goals the okay. last. Mm-hmm, I did step goals, and then um, I increased my um, sets. So just overall volume. Yeah, I I just find it fascinating sometimes. Like some people that I work with ask about doing a diet ketogenic, like a ketogenic diet. And then other people are avid about like never wanting to do something like that. And so I'm always like, okay, so this is interesting. I want to observe who's progressing faster. Um, and some of the people who are, I find that people that are willing to do a ketogenic diet tend to be more compliant (laughs) than the people who are, a whole food groups deleted, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And you're like, well, that's all gone. But, but the people that are willing to, to like vest into it, they, they tend to do really well. And even when I did it, it was kind of like, it just seemed easier, easier to do. Um, but I noticed that it was like, uh, at, at a certain point I did not, I felt like I didn't need to eat much. Anything. Yeah. You get full um, faster for sure. Yeah. Like the satiety signaling seemed to be really, really strong. Um, and then even if I just start fasting, like the satiety signaling kicks in pretty strong right now. So it's like if I ever know if I'm eating like a jerk too much, and I'm like, well, let's just you feel it. Right, you're just uncomfortable. And yeah, exactly. You know, especially if I'm dabbling in. Oh, geez, people bring like pastries and stuff here sometimes, uh, gluten free ones specifically for us to taste because I I, 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 I I sugar. So it's like oh. it's gluten free. Yeah, exactly. I just. <laughs> Sweetened with honey or agave, like it's sugar. I just we just filmed the podcast yesterday on like gluten free diets. <laughs> it's because yeah. because like Ryan and I kind of have to, otherwise we have these really terrible reactions. You know, skin reactions. Gut. Um, we're not celiacs, but we're definitely not responding well to to to, to anything that has gluten, at least. But um, you don't. Need- like humans we don't no, need we really no we really don't i remember um i remember when i because i've been in the industry almost 18 years i remember remember they were so avid about telling people they needed 10 servings of whole grains or something like that 10 or 12 servings i'm like yeah. like what the, what is a serving right so if a serving was uh two pieces of bread that's like 220 calories on average and you get 10 of those it's like 2100 calories of freaking bread like maybe. was that is that what the like what the food they pyramid were... thing yeah oh, that yeah. i think that's what it was based off of but now my plate oh is that I, i'm so like <laughs> i just don't pay attention to that stuff anymore um yeah. they got rid of food pyramid yeah so they what do they show like a like a template of a plate that's like eat this much vegetables eat this much that Exactly. Yeah. Now they decrease the carbs and more veggies and the protein and fats. Yeah. You know, did you notice uh, two years ago uh, they uh, they removed their saturated fat recommendations? No, I didn't. Yeah. So they originally said that you can only have, I think it was like eight grams a day or something stupid like that. Then they completely removed it. Then they don't have a limit as a recommendation anymore. Um, oh. Yeah, but they were really quiet about it <laughs> because <laughs> because this was like when they started, uh, you know, this is when things like the ketogenic diet and um, even more. Actually, I have I have, uh, I have something I'll ask you about that I want your opinion on too. It's it, um, that I keep seeing, but but yeah, I remember uh, more evidence was coming out how certain and this may be I don't know I still think it's debatable um, saturated fats in the sense of how. There, there may not be as damaging as they think, especially within the context of how you're having them. But um, have you seen all the the carnivore diet stuff? I've heard of it. <laughs> um, man, there's a lot of fads out nowadays. 
what is that like the carnivore diet there's um i guess you can say keto is part of that too right ketogenic yeah. diet yeah I mean, that's what they're very kind of lumped lumped together with there's a couple of guys that are really really leading the way with that but i i find it i find it interesting because some of them are a little too overzealous and maybe it's just for sake of clickbaitish stuff but it's interesting like if you're if you're only because a lot of these people that are are promoting it or are talking about a decrease in autoimmune issues oh okay right which which is interesting because that's what i personally experienced was a decrease in some of my autoimmune symptoms when i removed gluten on my diet 12 years ago but then i also removed a whole slew of things at the same time too so it was more what they would consider paleo i hate that word but like you know no grains basically um, but I was definitely still, I was still technically eating like roots, tubers, regular potatoes, um, and also rice, white rice in particular. Um, but the carnivore people, like they're, you know, they're making some really crazy claims. Um, like what? I'm, okay. What, what is the carnivore diet? I basically just only animal products. That's it. So the re complete opposite of veganism. <laughs> Yeah, watch out if you have a uh, high cholesterol. Don't do that diet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but they, but they see they're they're on that side of where they they'll say hypercholesterolemia is is so rare and it's bullshit in most cases. Which maybe I don't I don't know. I, I'm I'm definitely not in I'm not in the position to to, to make any of those claims. But um, it it is interesting where I I will agree where they're saying like from the evidence of uh, when people are on statins, even though their cholesterol has decreased, a lot of the actual issues that persist are still there. Like occurrences of heart attack don't really decrease when you're on a cholesterol med for most, for most cases, you know, but, but they also, the, the things I, I feel like are pretty crazy is they, they'll say you can eat as much meat or animal products as you want, period. And they're, they're promoting to eat like liver and stuff, you know, organ meat, which I'm like, great. They should, especially if you're only eating freaking muscle tissue, you're going to have some deficiency issues. Um, but their, their claim is that you don't have to manage calories at all. Like at all. Like it doesn't matter if you eat 5,000 calories or, you know what I mean? Yeah, but people, <laughs> I think the, that's kind of like the bro statements, right? Uh -huh. Those are like bro carnivore diet people yeah. just the same with the bro keto diet people <laughs> i just lump them all together with bro in front of it. but it's the same <laughs> like the dirty keto right the guys who come on guys and girls come on and say no you can eat however many calories um on keto and you'll be fine you're not going to gain weight you can eat <laughs> cheeseburgers just no bun you can eat whatever all these like horrible like i'm not saying cheeseburger is horrible but like all these like dirty keto stuff yeah. and it's just okay but if you're doing it for health you're not <laughs> you're not you're not being healthy right I, I would agree yeah i would agree I, eating a pound of cheese a day probably not a good thing you know most likely i <laughs> yeah, I, I would say so <laughs> i i don't know i haven't seen very many healthy people do that so that's more of a but yeah i i i don't know i just um I try not to read and watch too much of that stuff, but um, it just gets sent to me. So that that's why actually on, on the podcast. <laughs> you, uh, you, can, you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, but this is why we start reviewing uh, videos online because, you know, it's just, you know how it is. I, it's funny. They'll take a study or, or they'll reference a study and then they'll completely bastardize it just by reading the abstract rather than actually being able to interpret the statistics of the data. And so yeah. that, that in itself is like, you know, the whole causation correlation issue, I would say, you know, it's like, we can, we can, we can find whatever bias you, you want, you have in, in most research. <laughs> hey, that'll be a topic for you and Courtney to talk about. He's the research guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I, I really, uh, uh, I, I've been watching this podcast. And I'm like, this stuff is great. I'm like yeah, nerding I'm out on it. So watch the podcast when you guys interview each other. Or whatever. <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm gonna. I, I just gonna. I'm, I'm looking forward to picking his brain. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say you are gonna have good questions, and he's gonna have great answers, and yeah. he's gonna learn something. But debunking um, claims like that—that's yeah. one. Of should ask because he'll be able to talk about all that. That'll be that'll be awesome. Because I I I'm definitely not um, 
you know, an expert in that regard. You know, it, my, my whole thing is, is just teaching, just getting people to lose weight, you know, like I just don't want to complicate things, but, um, yeah, it, it'd be, it's going to be fun nonetheless. And, and I'm jealous you have direct access all the time, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I see what it you did there. No, nah. <laughs> It is nice. I see on your um, whiteboard behind you that you have NEAT and BMR and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I draw for people to tell them, like, you know, your your exercise is important, but not nearly as important as you think. That's NEAT. That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, that's a great advice right there. NEAT. So if you want to lose, just go clean your house. <laughs> this is true. Or just, yeah. you know, it's funny. Um, you know how at the facility over here, there's, uh, there's just tons of places to walk. And um, mm -hmm. when every every time i wanted to start getting losing weight a little quicker without really scaling back my calories i'll literally just go on a walk every day um plus it's killing two birds with one stone i think you need to get outside get some sunlight um i legitimately feel better getting sunlight as often as i can um so what what are your what are your thoughts on you know things like that like sunlight exposure vitamin d yeah, there's a lot of uh, research on sunlight and uh, your sleep-wake cycle and sunlight and um, binge eating. There's some, I forget oh, yeah. the exact mechanism, but something to do with the sunlight going into your eye. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's the suprachiasmatic optical nerve, whatever. What, so it's some type of mechanism that, like, prevents you not prevents but it instead of getting those hunger pangs and you know you just ate and you want to eat more go sit outside and it's supposed to like help you prevent binging so i don't know the exact mechanism but there are studies on that i recall uh reading in oh gosh what's this guy there's a researcher out in, I think he's maybe at Stanford or some, somewhere out, out there in the Bay. Um, the sleep guy, uh, Matthew Walker. Oh, uh, Matt Walker. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think in his book, he references something about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I like his, that book. I think yeah. it's probably one of the best books in sleep. Um, the one book that I, I used to reference a lot, but it's kind of been, um, phased out is, uh, it was called lights out. Um, man, that was an older book though, maybe like 15 years ago or a little longer, actually maybe longer, like 20 years ago, but there were, it was one of the first books I read to, to, that really talked about, you know, circadian biology, but a lot of the stuff that they were saying ended up not being true, but it was, it was like still good cause, right? In a sense, you know, there was this one claim that the amount of, uh, blue light exposure mm -hmm. that you're receiving from like a Great. night, like a night light, for example, or something like that was this magnitudes, uh, more than the sun or something like that, which they were wrong, but it's still impactful. You know, like yeah. I yeah. sleep with like blackout curtains in my room and I have a little, um, <laughs> I have, I have, uh, electrical tape over all my devices, you know, uh, um, like the TV. Cause there's that little red thing that pops oh, up sometimes yeah. or, yeah. um, Cause I, in, in my sleep, you know, significantly better ever since I started doing that. Cause that's, I know one thing that I've had an issue with for my whole life and sleep. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, do you get your labs done at all? Like checking your blood work? And stuff? I haven't, uh, in a while I am planning on to maybe the beginning of next year, but yeah, I want to get a blood panel done mm. just, um, stay updated with, my body. Yeah. So but I haven't in a while pre COVID. I think it's been years. Did you, uh, do anything? Do, did you end up having any labs done before you had, uh, before you started a ketogenic diet and then while you're yeah. on, it was, um, no, I haven't. Oh, come done. on. No, like <laughs> it's been a while since I had my labs done, but I do, uh, you know, I'm a procrastinator, which is bad. That happens. <laughs> And uh, I always say I'm going to do it and I haven't done it in a while, but I do want to get my blood work done just to see where I'm at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a while. I don't even want to look at the old ones because they're so old and it's not it's relevant. Kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So, you know, you, you mentioned you really like the health benefits of a ketogenic diet. 
Mm -hmm. So can you explain to everybody kind of what, what that looks like for some people? Yeah. So first of all, what I did before I jumped on to a ketogenic diet is I did my research and I watched a bunch of, uh, Jeff Volick and Stephen Finney, they're doctors, mm. and they are like the top researchers um, involved with the ketogenic diet and athletes and type 2 diabetics. And uh, yeah, so I watched a lot of their lectures and I read a lot of their articles and just to see like with athletes, because I am athlete, I'm, I don't have a metabolic disease. Um, so I just wanted to be sure that what I'm doing was correct or at least to the best of my knowledge mm -hmm. and the benefits that I got. So what I did, I didn't um, calculate or I didn't write out a plan. Really. I just was, I just cut out all the um, carbs, the sugars, the grains, and I just ate fats and some proteins and I just ate till satiety and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then once I started cutting calories, then I monitored exactly what I was eating but it wasn't bad. It wasn't a hard transition for me. I know some people get the keto flu, um, but I didn't get that. So, hmm. I don't know. but the benefits I do get is, um, I don't, okay. Woman's health. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so my TMI for men, um, That's you know, okay. there's more women that listen. <laughs> it throws off the pH of, you, you know, your vagina. Oh. And so your, I would get a lot of, um, not bacterial infection, like yeast infections from mm -hmm. eating sugars and carbs. And that was the main thing I saw was the first thing anyways. Once I got on the ketogenic diet, I haven't had one since. And wow. so great, yeah. So I'm not, I don't get bloated. Um, I don't feel um, inflamed in my joints. Uh, I can feel the inflammation when I eat carbs mm -hmm. and like around my knee specifically. But I don't feel inflamed and I do have... It's been so long since I ate carbs, so. <laughs> so you don't, when you even uh, eat, just eat freely, you're not even dabbling in, in like anything of like a dense carb at all? Now? Yeah. No. Okay, the last time I ate carbs, so this last keto prep, I did peak with carbs, but then that was it. What'd you have? What kind um, of carbs? I had honey, okay. apple, banana. Okay. And yeah, that was it. Did that make you feel any different? Ice cakes, but that wasn't. Did did that make you? Did you know? Was it a noticeable difference in how you felt when you started eating? Even though, well, honey felt like and I was like, "Ooh, I haven't had honey in years." It must have been <laughs> but, super sweet, huh? But it did. I did get crashes though. So mm, uh, yeah, naturally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, I was just tired from prepping, so it was hard to say what I was actually tired from. Mm, good point. You're just like super low carb, super low energy, period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but then right after the show, I went back to keto, so. Interesting. So what What else, like, uh, could, do you recommend, it, do you, is there a certain type of person that you would recommend strongly to do a ketogenic diet? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's evidence if you go to Stephen, Dr. Stephen Finney's website, Verta Health, mm -hmm. he has a lot of his uh, type 2, people who have type 2 diabetes, um, like they reverse it on a ketogenic diet. So there's a bunch of articles on that website. That's where I would refer people um, who want to do it for those specific health reasons, uh, reversing type 2 di diabetes, um, going to his website, Verta Health. It's pretty impressive, actually. They have a whole uh, uh, facility out in San Francisco, I believe. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Um, they, uh, yeah, they basically d do exactly what you said. And they've been doing that really efficiently. You know, like I've had a handful of clients that that volunteered themselves to do a ketogenic diet while they were diabetic, and um, I, they all came off of metformin, insulin, everything. It's it's crazy. Every I feel like every year I at least get a handful of people that do that. I had the the most recent one was a seventy one year old lady. Um, it's funny when you think diabetic, you always think overweight, but she wasn't overweight at all. She was maybe she's tiny. She was like barely five foot, one hundred and fifteen pounds. Oh. Yeah, but then her glucose levels when she was 
just wilding out. We're like three, four hundred. And uh, in the first couple of weeks, she was already she had to bring her metformin level. Uh, she had to stop her insulin right away, obviously, because she wasn't eating carbs. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I told her, like, you got to tell your doctor what you're doing, because, yeah. you know, this is pretty serious stuff. And then eventually she was able to come off metformin altogether. Um, That's great. That's a great story. It's pretty crazy. Um, to your clients. Yeah, there's, well, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's good to know that a lot of these things technically are reversible to a degree. Um, I've even read, there's a guy, I can't remember the name, but he promotes a ketogenic diet for type one diabetics. He, and he's, I know that, that, that it, it's, a special it's, case, I think, but he, he, he has a completely, let me see if I can find the, uh, the actual, uh, thing. There's an, there's a, of, um, glucose, like fasting glucose, right? That's what you want to check. Um, yeah. To check. Well, they, so, they, they have the risk so, of what the, the, ketoacidosis when they're yeah for type one yeah that's yeah. what they have to be of on a ketogenic diet but my sister-in-law just started keto and i had her check her fasting blood glucose levels mm -hmm. and she first started it was at 95 and then a week into it it was like 92 and it started going down and now it's at like 75 last time she checked and she's been mm -hmm. on keto yeah i was um happy that she reached out to me, uh, and wanting to learn more recipes and nice. just, uh, yeah, figuring out what to eat. And she got the keto flu though. So, oh yeah. <laughs> that just depends on it. And she has Graves disease. So, I mean, there oh. are cases, yeah. you know, that you have to be mindful of when you do start any diet really. So is she, did she have her uh, thyroid, uh, radiated or anything like that? Cause of the Graves? Um, she, she hasn't been taking her medication because she hasn't really needed to, but oh, if she, good. yeah, so, um, she'll take it when she, it's like, that's, she has to take it, but she hasn't been, um, needing it. So that's good. Cause Graves is when it's overactive, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. they tend to lose weight and have anxiety issues and things like that. Right. Like, yeah. and um, tired all the time because they're just like, yeah, yeah. it's just like mm -hmm. pedal to the metal all the time. Um, yeah, I, I, I see that with my clients, maybe like one or two a year It's way more rare than, than the opposite, but I don't know. I, I do think it's kind of interesting. Have you, have you had a client or family that tried a ketogenic diet while they were, um, the complete opposite, uh, no uh, hypothyroid. Yeah. No, I, I haven't, um, uh, encountered anyone. Or what about like PCOS? Cause I've heard there were some. There was some data, nothing conclusive, but uh, I think, oh, geez, what, I can't remember their name right now. Maybe I do need to get on a ketogenic diet. My brain's not working as fast <laughs> as it used to. <laughs> I swear, you know what, you know what, though, I, I really, I get bad brain fog sometimes when, when I train a little too hard. Um, and then, yeah, that's uh, normal, right? Yeah, I think it is, but uh, I, I recently, I recently, uh, started experimenting with trying to cool my body down a lot faster after, and that tends to help. So like around this time of the year, I, I end up feeling a lot better than, than the summertime. Um, but I also was reading that you could try taking, uh, a lot of vit vitamin B one, um, after a larger meal in the midday and it helps with glucose disposal. So maybe that spike, but I've never measured it or, personally tried it, but I've done like berberine and things like that, which actually do, do work. And I've even taken a little bit of a uh, small doses of metformin here and there just to experiment <laughs> too, which, uh, yeah, I did. That one did not feel good. Actually. It really messed with my stomach cause I took the wrong dosage. Um, <laughs> yeah, but did you take it after eating or yes, I took it after eating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, like a high carbohydrate diet. Or oh what? yeah. I ate like I think I eat like a hundred grams of carbs on purpose just to see, right? Okay. Cause otherwise you do it without food. I'm probably going to pass out, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And so you felt fine or what? Uh, no, I had to go to the bathroom a lot uh, cause uh, the dosage was too high, but I felt fine. Like energy okay. wise. Yeah. Uh, I didn't real, re realize that that was a side effect sometimes. Um, so are there, okay. So what about some of the research on, uh, 
and stuff they reference in longevity wise is that what what do you what do you think about that that they've made because i've heard claims uh, in reference to a ketogenic diet and and health span lifespan possibly things like that I have, um i haven't read that i'm aware of anyways i have i haven't read any articles on it i haven't looked into it on longevity mm-hmm. um there's I'm sure a, there's much out there but i haven't probably just on like rat models that that's what i would suspect yeah, there was a, well, I shoot, the most recent one I remember reading about on the rat models was the rapamycin thing where they were giving oh, them. The, <laughs> the what? Mtor. Yeah, yeah. But no, so the rapamycin. Again, you be your guy for yeah, that. Yeah, I know, that's true. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. So, okay, aside from the diabetics, um, you know, is is that something you think everybody should be doing? No, I, you know, it's not a one size fits all thing Mm -hmm. ever. Um, So if there's a coach out there that's telling you, no, this is for everyone, Mm, red flag, right? Yeah, that's true. (laughs) um, Every individual is different and Mm -hmm. their body is going to respond differently. And my body like happens to love high fats, um, loves the ketogenic diet. I know some people, you know, they prefer carbs and that's okay. I don't, I feel like there's no wrong diet. What's wrong is when you start eating food like substances, right? (laughs) And you cut out food. So you're eating things that's labeled keto and like you read the ingredients and you don't even know what the hell they are. Right. So stick to like whole foods. That's what I would say. If you like carbohydrates, eat fruit. If you, um, ketogenic diet eat avocados i don't know i think um i don't recommend it for everyone Mm -hmm. have you uh have you came across very many people that were doing more like the porch controlling junk food i i f y m yeah i yeah i I hope it's dying now i haven't really been yeah they're just not i i you know i i do think it was kind of like also misrepresented to a degree but then um you know the whole thing what they were doing what became popular was the pop tart thing right was that what it was they were like super big on eating fitting a pop tart into their diet hearts and yeah yeah (laughs) again food like substances it's not food yeah right no, yeah, they tend to yield a lot less uh, nutrient value and a lot less satiety signaling, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's, I mean, personally, from my personal experience, it, it's one of those things. It's like I feel, like I know I feel better when I'm consistently eating uh, enough protein. Like I literally feel bad. I just don't feel right if my protein levels are not at a certain level. And, and maybe that's just certain B vitamins I'm getting out of, the, out of the meat or something like that. But, um, well, we need protein, right? Yeah. Um, we need protein and fats. We can live without carbs. Sorry, carbohydrate fans, it's, it's <laughs> but it's true. true. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even like, uh, Volick and Finn, they say that we need about like 1.2 to like two grams, I think on the high end per kilogram of body weight and yeah. athletes, you know, the higher end. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, though. Um, that totally makes a lot of sense, actually, especially considering how much you know amino acids the the body actually needs, right? Um, so let's see here. What else was I going to ask you about? Um, oh, uh, you have a very particular supplement regimen. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Do you care to break down some of that? Because the funny thing is, it's like uh, uh, a lot of people who say they're into research-based stuff, they're very anti-supplement. But I would argue that a lot of those people don't really spend enough time, you know, either just self-experimenting possibly. But um, I don't know. I just I, I just find it interesting sometimes. But they're probably not into bodybuilding either. I think no, yeah, bodybuilding Body- definitely way more into the uh i'm gonna try a whole bunch of stuff yeah <laughs> yeah see what works hope for the best yeah. um, <laughs> oh goodness that's that very true I now? uh well i have like my daily supplements um it's a list that's you know you have seen just, it before right yeah there's break it down <laughs> multivitamin um phosphatidylserine 
Um, and that, you know, tapers the cortisol level. Mm -hmm. And then I take uh, fish oil. And what, then what kind of fish oil. Are you picky about that? Uh, krill oil, I think it is. Yeah, I like the um, krill oil too, actually. And so the krill oil that I take dim, right? Okay, so my mom has had breast cancer. She's uh, clear of it now, I think, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, so dim, there's a lot of studies on that too. You actually introduced me to that in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, you introduced me to that. So you take uh, it every day though? Every day, yeah. And there's no... Because I actually have um, what's called polycystic um, breasts. And so... I get cysts in my breasts and it does help. Oh, so so. It, it, that is, is that, uh, doing something to the estrogen receptors then? Yeah. It helps, um, balance the estrogen levels. So oh, interesting, but you're not having any irregular, uh, like, uh, cycles or anything like that. <sighs> my cycles have been irregular from competing, uh, um, going up and down in body fat. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I'm just, I, I just never heard of women taking dim all the time. That's why. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying. Yeah. To, I'm not trying to grill you. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> so I take that, and then I take glutamine, and I take berberine. I've been taking that. How much do you take, and how do you take it? Because that, that that's one I, I find fascinating. Berberine, but, yeah, glutamine, uh, uh, both. I just one dose glutamine. I just take one pill, whatever's on the bottle. I don't take the full serving size. I just take a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I take a green tea extract for the polyphenols. And then I take, um, I don't know what else do I take? <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of stuff. I know. I've seen uh, you post it sometimes. I'm like, wow, that's more than what I take. I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. I have like my whole supplement that I have every morning over there. And then, when I'm cutting calories uh, before my workout, I drink leucine, lysine, and arginine. Um, but that's when I'm like on a cut phase and leucine, low calories. Lysine and arginine. Mm -hmm. So what 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 uh, what what amounts of of those three? Um, the I look at the dosage and yeah. do like I think it's one gram of lysine and I think it's six grams of arginine. Oh wow! And then yeah. I, I always add salt and potassium to to the mix and just drink it before my workout. The lysine is that have something to do with metabolizing leucine? Um, it's or what does that do? Mentor, so you get the muscle building activation. The lysine does. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I know yeah. leucine is important for that. I, yeah. That's interesting. I never even knew that lysine played a role. Like I said, definitely not my. I know someone to ask, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a baby in the knowledge right now when it comes to physiology. Ah, right, you're still you're you're you'll 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 be right there. But okay, so go ahead. So leucine, lysine, arginine, and then salt and potassium. This is when I'm in my cut phase and I'm low calories. Um, so that's for muscle preservation at that point. Yeah, so I drink it right before my workout and get a good pump too from the sodium and arginine. Yeah, well, six grams of arginine definitely gets you pump. <laughs> six grams. I do. I think half the serving of three uh, grams. Gotcha. But that's what the serving size is on the bottle. Um, so I think that's all I take. Nice. And probiotics. I take a probiotic. What kind of probiotic? Um. Do you know? Rabbit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. <laughs> I don't know. Um, whole food dietary supplement. Oh, this one. Primal Defense. Yeah. So that's okay. actually a uh, soil-based probiotic, I believe. The Primal Defense one, it's, it's derived oh. of the soil. Um, that's one I used to actually, uh, I came across that a long time ago because of uh, skin issues. And then what happened was it cleared mine up and I had some other people try it and it actually worked. Uh, surprisingly. Oh. It was kind of crazy. Do you still use it? No, no. You know, what was interesting, I did that. And then back in 2016 is when I started really going into the outdoors a lot. And uh, I feel like ever since then, never had those skin issues uh, sure. anymore. It's kind of weird. But I, 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 would, I would speculate it has something to do with the uh, exposure to the, uh, um, you know, flora all over the place out in the mountains yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. Uh you know, that's still... Is that the phone booth behind you? 
started as a sketch. <laughs> That's cool. That's so cool. And I have a humorist right here too. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, you guys are definitely nerds. <laughs> that's a good thing. I mean that in a in a complimentary way. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, is there anything else you'd like to share? You know, are you if you guys want to read blogs, go to the Kratos website. It's all health related. Um, mm-hmm. It's KratosAthletics.com. And you can uh, it's all science based evidence that we use. Um, so if you go there, you can read the tips on whatever the blog is on. Uh, we have one on sleep, actually. It's pretty good. Talk, we Ooh. talk about blue light. Yeah, and we um, use Matthew Walker as his article. Oh, very nice. So there's um, really good blogs if you want to go read it and just help you in your fitness and health journey. So that's all I need to say. Perfect. It was, awesome. it was a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> tangents but that's okay oh that's just kind of how my my podcast goes if you watch enough of them you're like oh yeah they never stick to one topic (laughs) oh man no you know i'll uh i'm looking forward to you know getting courtney on here and uh nerding out uh, or you know hearing him nerd out you know (laughs) but thank you for coming on um i really think you had a lot of good things to share and uh We'll, we'll put a link for the site up in there and uh, you guys can follow her on where, where do you post the most on Instagram? Um, on Instagram. Yeah. So I post a bunch of recipes on Kratos athletics and then I have a lot of um, workout videos too on both pages. Perfect. So my personal page is mainly like my bodybuilding physique and workouts. And then Kratos is uh, more recipes and workouts. There you go, guys. You heard it. All right. Well, appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye. See you. Thanks for having me. All right.